everyone, it's Nadine, Public Programs Coordinator at Roy Botanical Gardens, and today is a very exciting day because today is the day that I start my tomato seeds. Now, this year my goal is to grow a rainbow tomato salad. So I'm trying to grow a tomato of every different color to make a beautiful salad this summer. Now you could grow determinate tomatoes, which are going to fruit all at the same time, which is great if you're making sauce, or you might choose to grow indeterminate tomatoes, which are going to fruit all throughout the season. Today, I'm gonna to try and plant some watermelon beefsteak tomatoes, and these are the seeds that I actually saved from my favorite plant last year. Now, on the back of any seed pack, you're going to notice that they will typically always say, start tomatoes indoors six to eight weeks before your last frost date. Now where I live, our last frost date is about early May, but I like to have a little bit of wiggle room just in case and also provide a little bit of time to make sure I get to harden off my seedlings before they grow into the ground. So typically I'll start my seedlings around the first day of May. I will begin to harden them off about one week before the May long weekend and then get them into the ground over the May long weekend. Now, I've already filled these cells with some soil, so what I'm going to do is use my fingers and just squish that soil down just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, ever so gently, so that it's about a quarter to half a centimeter from the surface. Now, to double my chances of germination, I always plant two seeds at a time. So each of these cells is going to have two seeds planted inside of it. That way, if one seed doesn't come up, Hopefully the next one will. When those seedlings do come up, what I will do is snip one of them at the soil surface and just leave one plant in that cell. You could also try to divide it, but you have to be really careful if you're doing that, that you don't disturb the plant's roots. So once those seeds are in there, what I'm going to do is take some soil and very loosely put it on top. Just a teeny tiny bit, just kind of crumbling it over the surface and gently patting it down. Now these seeds are ready for some water and for some heat. So while these seeds are germinating, they don't actually need any light, but they do need some heat. Adding a dome on top will help to retain some moisture and a bit of heat. And if you have a heat mat, that's great. You can put your seeds on top of there. If you don't have a heat mat at home, try on top of the fridge. Like I said, they don't need light at this stage. Once you see those seedlings pop out of the soil surface, then you need to make sure that they have some sunlight and you can remove that dome off the top. You can use a spray bottle to keep your seeds wet, keep some moisture in there. Or add a little bit of water into the bottom of the tray and that way it'll be sucked up by those developing roots. Now, right now the sun is rising and setting around 7.30 or so. So that's a 12 hour cycle that you can keep your grow lights on. And that's about a minimum that you want when you're starting seeds indoors is at 12 and 12 hours, just mimicking what's going on outside. Now these are planted in a one by two inch cell. And in a few weeks when these come up, their roots are gonna be nice and strong, hopefully. You might even be able to pop a seedling out and see some of those roots spiraling around the bottom of the cell. And that is a good indicator that they want to be potted up. So when you're potting up your seedlings, it's best to pot them up into a container that is twice as big. So if these are one by two inches, you're gonna to wanna to pot, pot your seedlings up into something that's three by three or three by four inches wide and, and, and four inches deep. So that's what I'll be potting up into here. And because I have a smaller space at home, I'm just potting them up into smaller containers and they'll do the rest of their growing once they get outside. And speaking of outside, a very important thing to remember is to harden off your seedlings. You'll notice that your plants may be very pale green and paper, paper thin. So that is a good indicator that they need to be hardened off. And you can do this for all of your plants, not just your tomatoes. So that week before the May long weekend that I know I'm gonna be planting outside, that's when I begin to harden my plants off. So they might spend a couple hours in the morning in the shade outdoors, then a couple hours in the afternoon in the shade outdoors, and slowly over time I'm going to build up their tolerance. A couple hours in the morning sun, a couple hours in the afternoon sun, a full day of sun, and they might even get to spend a night outdoors as well before getting planted permanently 
at the end of May. Another good way to prepare your tomato plants to live outside is to have a fan on them. Now, I don't have room for a fan at my house, but what I like to do is just come downstairs and just graze my hand over top of the seedlings throughout the day just to kind of build some of their resilience to living outdoors. Now, after they've hardened off, you'll notice that the leaves get nice and dark green, nice and thick, and that is the, the cell walls. They're really bulking up and the skin of the leaves actually developing a nice coating that's going to help protect them from the harsh rays of the sun, but also help those leaves to retain water. And when you see that nice dark green color in the leaves, then you know that they're ready to live outdoors. Now, when you plant your seeds outside or your seedlings outside, you can actually plant your tomato seeds pretty deep all along the stem. They are going to develop roots. So you can plant your tomatoes three, four, five inches if they've gotten quite tall right into the ground. You can even plant your tomatoes by digging a trench and growing them in a J shape. And all along that trench, they're going to develop roots and create a nice, strong and healthy root system. While they're young, it's also a good time to add tomato steaks or cages if that's what you're using. But make sure to keep the leaves at the base of the plant trimmed as it starts to grow to allow for some really great air circulation. So hopefully in a few months, you'll have your own rainbow tomato salad. Happy gardening, everybody, and happy season ahead.